Oh. Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. How you doing? I like your shirt. Welcome to Two Crimes. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, it, the bottom, you can't really see the bottom, but it says, what up, party people? <laughs> so, I love that. That's right. Terry, Terry is, is very dedicated. She's joining us from the beach. Okay. That is some dedication. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Hello. that. Hi, Jaded. How are you doing? Hi, Holly Berry. Good to see you. Buffy and, and Angie and Indy Cindy was first in the chat. I don't have anything special for that, but but just know that you were first in the chat. We need to do something uh, like that. We do. We need to figure something out. Top three or something. Um, yeah. Come up with a new video. Yeah. What, what what would they get? Do they get a um? They get a one hour. One hour, all you can drink from the wine cellar of True Crime and Wine Time. Um, I don't like to share my wine. Oh, but it's a figurative wine cellar. It's not a okay. As long as it's one. a figurative one, because I don't like to share. <laughs> this show cannot afford it. <laughs> they can the minute, get... listen. The minute we can do that is the minute I quit. No, I'm kidding. I'm never going to quit this. <laughs> um. They could get um, some free Jasper videos. <gasps> Speaking of free Jasper videos. Yes. So many free Jasper videos. I love it. I'm so excited. I don't know if anybody is really that excited about meeting him. No, I don't think so either. Not at all. Um, oh, Indy, if you missed it, uh, I said you were first in chat. Uh, Captain says, show us the baby. Girl, what? <laughs> he's already in his pajamas and he will have to oh. eat in a little bit. Jasper! Hi, hi, Kelly. Kelly, say hi to Jasper. Say hi, Mr. Jasper. I just want him to be like... I know. <laughs> He only does that when I leave the room. He might do it when I Aww. feed him and I take his bottle away because he's all finished. So he'll get fed um, at eight o'clock my time. So in about 25 minutes, he'll get fed. Oh, buddy. He's so you eat the cute. Microphone? Let me just full screen you and him. Damn. He's so adorable. Can you say hi to everybody? Say hi. So those are those are hooves on the bottom? Though those are yeah. he has hooves. He did have horns thing. that would have come in, but he had his buds and balls removed last week. So he will get no uh, horns and he got no balls. No horns and no, no horny. Balls. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> and what's funny, oh. they said his balls were so small. I was like, poor guy, that's not something uh. you ever want to say. <laughs> I felt bad for him. You already you already took him. You don't have to, you know, comment know. on it. He is a dwarf goat. <laughs> like he adds, and he's wearing his cute little giraffe and elephant and duck and froggy pajamas tonight. The so other cute. night when you were on night court, he had on um dragon or not dragon dinosaur pajamas. That's dinosaur. why I said he matched your shirt because he had on dinosaurs. And they go wow. Oh, That's how I yes, feel dinosaur baby. sound these days. Oh, good. Is he gonna? Is he gonna? Um, hi, llama. Is he going to uh, flip out when you pop the bottle? I don't know. We will find out. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, oh, <laughs> all I know is I can't say the word p o t t y out loud because oh. he goes on command, and I said it one day, and he went in my lap. Uh. <laughs> It's I better than the alternative, as in say that word. But I don't yes. know. Let me pop it, and we will see. Hey, buddy, you okay? Okay. M Mama's gonna try I gotta, not to I gotta freak pop. out. We both have one that needs to pop, but oh, I'll yes. you go first, and you tell me what it is. Oh. Guys, I was gonna try to show y'all. He's nibbling my arm because it's getting close to dinner time. He stopped when I picked him up. At least he's not nibbling other things. And I have lipstick <laughs> on him. 
Yeah. What? He needs to not nibble. Yeah, I got oh. lipstick on him when I kissed him. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pop because I'm having <laughs> some Vouv Rosé. Didn't even move. Didn't phase him. <laughs> He's too busy trying to suckle my uh, arm. That is... <laughs> There he goes. He's nibbling on my arm. But yeah, I'm very pink. I'm drinking Hello, out of my pink Shanka. Barbie glass. And then I'm drinking a, a rose. Yes. Drink. Hello, Bacon Bit. Okay, stop. It's good to see you, Shanka, and Bacon Bit. Suckling me. Cannibal goats. No, Cannibal that means goats he wants... from Texas. Also called politicians. <clears throat> It means he wants me to pet him, and he's not getting enough attention. See, he's oh, poor very baby. needy. I want to be your goat. <laughs> you want to be my goat? I want to be your goat. Hey. All right, so this is not as fancy as yours, um, but neither am I. I'm not as fancy as you. See, this is, they need clever things on here. It just says, enjoy safely. Please read warning below. But there's no warning below. So this is, this is barefoot bubbly. bubbly. Strawberry fruit scotto. Oh, this is going to be interesting. It'll oh, be I don't know if I'm as fancy at this as you are. Oh, we're going to see what this is going to go everywhere. Watch this. This is going to be. Oh, see, I didn't let it go everywhere. Well, I'm going to try not to said. let it. Well, we'll see. <laughs> he's gonna shoot us load watch jasper he's gonna shoot it he's gonna shoot it watch <gasps> he shot it that was loud that was incredibly loud i'm just glad it didn't pop everywhere where did it go did it go behind my back i don't know see it i did didn't too. do that because last time i did that, that when we were recording it hit the fan and then spun and hit the wall and it was a big old mess it it jumped, it bounced up, it hit my diagonal wall, my angled wall, and the, uh, the acoustic tiles, and then bounced over here and down behind my back. That takes uh, talent. Cheers. I have a feeling this was supposed to be cold. Uh, it said know. bubbly, right? Bubbly is well, yeah. supposed to be cold. <laughs> JT, come on. I didn't say I was good at this. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Oh, that's cute. Jazz. So we have a chia palm named Jasmine, and we call her Jazz sometimes, or Jazzy, or Jammy Jam. Are you? You're you're laughing yes, at me. Yes, we right? are. You're laughing at me. everybody's laughing at me. That's fine. Oh yes. Uh, um. For those of you who who missed the some of the other shows, um, Terry's got a show coming out in May, Mondays and Wednesdays at twelve Central, uh, midday missing, and uh, Terry is going to highlight missing person cases in order to get the word out, to shed some light. Um, I'm, I'm, you said it's like a combination of like known cases, but mostly unknown. Is that yes? That is correct. Okay. Because not everybody so. is white and blonde. So. Exactly. Okay. In case anybody wants to watch. Do you want any? Okay. Okay. He's so cute. Isn't There's nothing he can do that's not cute. Oh, <laughs> God. I'm so happy. He oh, sucked the, so hard, the... you'll see the bottle start collapsing in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, piggy pig. <laughs> Get it, Jasper. <laughs> he, oh, yeah. Um, I shared this with JT earlier, so I'll go on and share with all of our close friends. <laughs> I let Jasper <laughs> sleep out in our bedroom instead of in the master bath. Um. Let's just say he thought I was mama too much and tried to suckle my boob. And you can see how powerful he is. I'm going to just say it was painful. Are you finished? 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> I shouldn't down. laugh. I'm sure it's not not I not have happy a bruise. Time, but uh, I have a bruise. <laughs> Are you done? It would have been funny if handsome hubby was like, uh you got something to tell no. me? He goes, uh, Jasper, those are not yours. Those are daddy's. And I said, um, excuse me, daddy. Those are not yours. Those are mine. I just give you permission to play with them occasionally. <laughs> hey. Come here, buddy. And no, he does not get burped. He just likes to lay here. Yes. No. Double H found it funny. Tell bacon, <laughs> bacon bitch, bitch she needs one. one. She needs one. They you know, are perfect. My brain was so traditional pet wise. I never thought about it. Like if you could have a small goat, it'd basically be a dog. It it easier to house train. I take him outside. They're I say smarter. the word. He goes. Oh, he's definitely smarter. Yeah, aren't you? Aren't you? But they are extremely Don't loud people. when I walk out of the room. He's got some lungs on him. Oh, really? Hi. <laughs> Shanka disagrees. <laughs> Shanka disagrees. Yes, she does. <laughs> um, he goes in and out the dog door just like a dog. He will get 30 to How 40 pounds he? is according to the research that I've done. All but sudden, considering I have two 100 pound dogs, as long as he's under that, I'm great. Huh. That's a big goat. That's a big goat. He's a Niger Nigerian dwarf, so he should not get that big. He does. He goes in and out the pet door, goes out the doggy at door. At your oh, house. <laughs> not at her at house. your house. <laughs> well, he's going to weigh as much Currently, as your dog, yes. Yeah. Currently, um, he weighs about five, six pounds. Thank you, Samantha. He's got to get some new ones because he's growing so big. I was telling um, JT, he still has his umbilical cord, little string attached. It's starting to dry out to fall off. And no, I'm not going to keep it. <laughs> Good. Gonna keep it. <laughs> oh, should we hop into some news? We should. All right, let's do that. Let's do that right now. Uh, it's you know, it's a little, it's a, it's a little false advertising because some of the news that we cover is not going to be so breaking, but maybe it'll be breaking to you. So it's all relative, right? Well, it is, <laughs> but I'm going to just say something just gave me nightmares. <laughs> Just going to say that gave me nightmares. Um, we lock it at night so that people can't go through the door. See? Uh, absolutely. Come on. Tell her to come on to my house. I will be more than happy to take her and teach her how to take care of this little guy. <laughs> well, um. You know who really needs to learn to take care of themselves? Uh, there's a woman from... Um, oh, boy. I had the the answer there. You know what? It doesn't Indiana? matter where she's from. She called 911, uh, which normally people do, and I would not call people out for this. However, an alleged meth user landed herself behind bars when she called Indiana police to rat out her drug dealer, telling cops that the batch was, quote, not what it was supposed to be. Her name's Sarah Harris. She's 34, and she dialed 911 twice in January to complain that she was supplied with a bad baggie of meth. Um, she then allegedly handed the drugs over to the cops at her home in the city of Bedford in hopes that they could test the drug's authenticity. <laughs> it, <laughs> it left her feeling as though she was having a heart attack, she told the police. Maybe you shouldn't do meth. Um... Harris allegedly admitted to snorting a line of the substance and then felt something different when it touched her skin and nostrils. Um, she knew it was right. She, she said, <sighs> yes. Um, 
She should be thankful it wasn't fentanyl. Right? Uh, She compared the painful sensation to the, quote, bowl of normal meth she smoked with a friend previously. (laughs) Oh, man. She was slapped with a meth possession charge, um, which carries a maximum 30-month prison sentence. Uh, it's not the first run-in she's had with with cops. She has prior convictions for theft, meth possession. One, they kind of go hand in hand. Criminal mischief, disorderly conduct, resisting, and operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated. What a win! What a win! So there's your there's your Indiana. Um, do you want to see Jasper yours is end? smarter? Even Jasper is smart enough to not do that. Yes, Jasper is smarter than a fifth grader. Um, do you want me to keep going and you want to do your thing last because yeah. it's a good thing? Yeah. Okay. So, so you know the um, you know that whole like, you know, Twitter being a social media conglomerate that's now X that I refuse to call X, so it's Twitter. They're they're doing so well. They're doing so well uh, that they've decided that they're auctioning off office items from its headquarters. Okay, come again. So in, uh, oh, wait, hold on. I lied. This was, oh, this is old. (laughs) I told you it's not breaking. This was in 2022 for 2023. Uh, Okay. Yeah, yeah. They auctioned off some of their surplus items at San Fran, California headquarters. Okay. Including statues, kitchen items, furniture, and more. Like an at sign with plants in it. And apparently they were just getting ready to lose a ton of. Oh, yeah, this is exactly why they did it. Um, let's see. Uh, this was after the, the weeks of chaos since Elon Musk's $44 billion takeover. Just last week, it was reported the company started converting some of its empty headquarters offices into bedrooms for employees. Uh, quote, it's pretty obvious that they're sleeping at the office. There's certainly an expectation given that beds, full queen size beds, mattresses, the whole thing were brought into Twitter HQ over the weekend um, and employees were not informed that this was happening. Um, let's see here. Uh, this is not the first time that Elon has actually used the building for what it's not intended to be. Right. Um, so this hardcore culture laid out by Musk will likely lead to more people leaving Twitter. You are right. Sir, about two thirds of the company staff have been fired or resigned so far, and it's just got in worse. Just got in worse. So, yep. Well, yep, 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 considering yep. what Tesla did this week, laid off fourteen thousand people. People in Texas, they sent them an email to the work email at like three o'clock in the morning, Monday morning. So if you didn't check your email before you went to the office. You didn't know that you didn't have a job. You got told when you showed up to try to go in. Now, you know, that is just horrible. And some of these people had relocated from California. This is the dude who has billions upon billions of dollars and he's laying people off. Yep. So but he's going to get in some trouble because he. It, Apparently, there's rumors he did not do the official warn notice, which is required in Texas, and that he got some tax abatement credits for hiring a certain number of people and employing them. them. You can't lay them off like that. He, he got the he got the credit and then he laid them off. What a! Ch- I mean, he won't get in trouble. I'm He'll pay himself. Just gonna say he's nobody. I mean. Everybody needs jobs. You need money. But find a company that respects and values you. Companies have to make hard decisions and you have to lay people off. It happens. I have had to do it. But you don't do it that way at all. Yeah, no, no, not at all. Um, Do it to their face or find some way. It's really. Was. Um, you don't just lock them out of the building. And then the comment he made when people were upset, somebody made the comment, uh, you know, a spokesperson for them says, well, our employees have been told they should check their emails first thing every morning. Um, excuse the hell out of me. You oh, should no. not be able to tell me what to do when I'm off the clock. He expects them to work 24-7. Yeah. Um, 
he's just another reason why he's a butt cheek. Um, on a funnier note, uh, there was a man who was who attempted to rob a store. This is courtesy of is this llama. I think this, I think it's llama. I think this is from llama. She can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but there was a man who attempted to rob a store, uh, but he did so. Um, well, let me just let me just read this to you. This is in Memphis. Man's in jail after allegedly attempting to rob a store three times, including the use of a snake. Reginald Cook, 26, is charged with two counts of attempted aggravated robbery. Police say around 2 a.m. he attempted to rob the Shell convenience store and implied that he had a weapon. According to the affidavit, Cook entered the store again and demanded money from the register. The victim said that Cook kept reaching into his clothing, implying that he had a gun. But Cook left the store after the victim refused. At approximately 3.05 a.m., Cook entered the store for the th third time, but with a five-foot snake wrapped around his neck. Like, yeah. Alice Cooper? I, what are you doing, dude? Um, he... he <sighs> so the first time didn't work, the second time didn't work, the third time he walked up to the counter and said... Give me the damn money. <laughs> yeah. He decided it wasn't working right. I mean, I have to say, you walk in with a snake or a spider, I'm going to give you whatever you want. Uh, you know? So I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, the affidavit states the victim saw Cook reaching inside his backpack, implying he was armed with a weapon. The victim pulled his gun in self-defense. Police say no money was taken, no injuries were sustained. That was luck. Uh, minutes yes. later, officers arrived and took him into custody. What a champ. What a champ. Was the snake God. injured? No. No. Darn. No, other than the fact <laughs> that he had it. Um. Let's see. Okay, I got two, two, two more. Uh, this one's quick. This is more sciency, but um, oh, this is old too. What was I doing when I was looking these up? It doesn't matter. The world's deepest fish was caught on camera for the first time by scientists over twenty-seven thousand feet below the surface, which is insane. Um, That's is he white because he doesn't get sun? Or I like am opaque? looking for a picture of this thing. Actually. I can show you a video real fast. I can show you a video. Thank you for birthday. He's kind of cute. He's kind of cute. Let's see here. Present share screen. Dark screen. Right. We'll be the judge of that. Right. Baited cameras. That's so deep. The snailfish species. He's so cute. He is seeing he's white. Yeah, they're not like creepy like other deep deep fish. Yeah. He's even smiling. Okay, well, the he's side of him kind of looks a little bit like a testicle. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is. Okay, here's the last thing. I think some of our folks this is old too. You know what? I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Oh, What's up, Miss Swagger? Swagger? Swager? Meh. Meh. Um, how do they know the fish is, is deep? I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know. Um, maybe he read them a poem. Maybe he's part of Deaf Comedy. You know, Deaf Jam. Uh, who knows? Uh, anyways, back in 2022, because that's where my brain's at these days, um, they found a skeleton of a woman in Poland who's suspected of being a vampire in the 17th century. Um, you know what? I really didn't look at this. There's no more than that. It's a video, and I'm not going to play it because it's CBS, and they'll cancel uh, um, me. So, not as much fun, but you have something better. I <laughs> do the... Diddy fish. <laughs> 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 I bet you he wished was, he was. So this first thing I have, because those that don't know, besides loving goats, I love elephants. Elephant roam streets of Butte, Montana after escaping from the circus. The elephant named Viola was getting her routine bath when a nearby truck backfired. So she took off. 
they have pictures of her running down the street. <laughs> and here's the funny thing. They said, man, they move fast. I don't know. Yeah. Why oh, no. Elephants so move. I'm like, just because they're big doesn't mean they can't run. But now the other one is good news for everybody in the U.S. Wendy's is giving out free French fries every Friday for the rest of the year. All you have to do is make a purchase. It can be a Frosty and then you can get free French fries. There is no minimum. So Friday, 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 I like French fries, French their fries, French, French fries. fries. So that's yeah. my really good not news because that is 37 Fridays for the rest of the year. That is 37 orders of French fries. Do we have any panda news? Hmm. Oh, let's look. My let's older son out. loves pandas. How about Panda The Express latest news? panda news is blank. Giant pandas. When was this out? Let me take a look at the... Oh, this is newer. No, it's not. Yes, it Did is. Did you find the San Francisco one? So San Francisco mayor looks forward to bringing back pandas from China. They're bringing two, a pair of giant pandas from China to the San Diego Zoo. Well, not that. that exciting. I mean, if you live out there, maybe, <laughs> perhaps. Yeah. But if not, you know. oh, God. <gasps> what? Pandas aren't useless. They're cute and you can cuddle them. <laughs> I don't know if you can cuddle giant not pandas. But you They're can cuddle. They're not the brightest them. in the world. Okay, neither am I. But I'm still cuddly. <laughs> well, I mean, that's okay that you can't because it wasn't about the politicians. It was about the pandas. About the pandas. So focus on that and you won't have to worry about it. Um, okay, so that's the end of the not really breaking news. <laughs> But it's kind of the start of our cases. Um, since you've already fed Jasper, do you want to go first or do you want to go second? I can go first. Since okay. I have fed him, I am going to have to convince Double H to come and get him at some point to take him out to go to the bathroom. Ah. I am having trouble getting my computer to cooperate. My computer just froze. What is going on? Okay, there it is. Buffy, that's, that's because most of them have syphilis. So there's that. <laughs> so... <gasps> oh, my. Well, I can tell you this. My case is not about any cute animals. I will say... The bank robber in this movie, or in this movie, oh my God, my brain, um, in this case, wanted to be like Bodie, a.k.a. Patrick Swayze, and Point Break. He literally oh. watched the Point Break movie to get this idea. So I personally found that funny because I happen to love Point Break. All right. Bring it on. I am trying, but my monitors are not cooperating with oh, me no. tonight. It's so okay. My stuff's not either. It, it's going to make me turn my head sideways, and I hate to do that to you guys. Captain said, I mean, I've known many men who were inspired in the same way by break, at point break. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to just have to turn my head sideways because one of my monitors is not cooperating with me. Let me try that. So I don't know what else to do. 
So too bad. So the almost great oh. Chlamydia. <clears throat> I'm going to just I say, forgot. I don't want either of those. Yeah, no, thanks. Not one. I mean, I haven't had them. I'm just going to say, I don't want either one of them. So. Nope. Un- unplug and plug back in. The syphilis screen. and the chlamydia. Oh, my screen. Um, <laughs> 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 Let me see if that works. No, listen. You just unplug. You don't plug back in to avoid that. Like you just, you know. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> I do not know what is going on here. I think your mic changed. Is it better now? Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, I pushed it away while I was trying to do this. So. I'm going to just have to turn my head sideways so y'all can see my fat profile and my hair. So this robbery is kind of ingenious in a way, but yet they were stupid because they got caught. So on September 21st, 1991 in San Antonio, Texas, Tellers Lisa Silvas, age 19, and Kelly McGinnis, age 21, not the Kelly from Maverick or Top Gun, but they were trusted employees of the Texas Commerce Bank, and they were the only two working the bank on that Saturday from 9 to 1. Guys, this is a 19-year-old and a 21-year-old. They were in charge of the whole bank. I don't know, but I've never been trusted with that person. So nope. I found that very nope. interesting. So the two showed up for work as usual. Kelly unlocked the first door and then she walked in and Lisa was behind her. They were walking down the hall towards that next door that you have to go through to turn the alarm off. And Lisa turned to say something or Kelly turned to say something to Lisa. And Lisa was not alone. There was a guy standing behind her wearing a rubber Halloween mask, wearing overalls and was holding a pistol and had on gloves. And he ordered her to turn off the alarm or he would kill them. So the robber aimed his gun at Kelly's head. And with both of the tellers shaking and crying, they went to the alarm and they opened the door. And Kelly was shaking so bad that she could not do it. Lisa knew that if they didn't do it soon, an alarm was going to go off. I I I don't know if y'all can hear all those dogs. Can you hear that? I thought it was the goat. Oh, well. No, it's my five dogs that for some reason Double H doesn't seem to think needs to stay quiet right now. Now they're howling. Okay. I apologize. So Kelly was too shaken up to turn the alarm off. So Lisa took the keys and she turned the alarm off because she was worried this guy in this mask was going to kill them. They said it was a Halloween mask. They didn't say if it was a president's mask. I kind of hope it was, it was since they said he watched Point Break. I hope. Yeah. I mean, that checks out. I, I, I think so. There was a piece of me that was hoping it was a Will Shatner mask, but then that's where they got Michael Myers mask from. So it's not that. Did you know that? Did you know Mike Myers mask was originally a William Shatner mask? William Shatner mask. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so after the alarm was turned off, the robber secured Kelly's hands with zip ties. And then with his gun, he had Lisa take him to the vault inside the vault was multiple saves safes. Now he told them that he had a police scanner in his pocket. And if he heard anything about a silent alarm being tripped, he was going to kill them both immediately. Now, The safes inside the vault had a double lock set up. So Lisa used the key to unlock the first lock. 
Kelly, whose hands were tied, called out the combination to her and the masked man, and they unlocked the second lock. And then Lisa was given a large trash bag and told to fill it with all of the cash. And then the robber took them over to their cash drawers and told them to empty their drawers into the bag as well. After he emptied the vault and the cash drawers, he ordered both of them to stay in the vault and he left. He literally got out of there in less than five minutes. And he escaped with almost um, $200,000. Did did he lock them in the vault or did he just have them sit there? He did not. But he told them if they Uh came out, he would shoot them. So they waited a couple of minutes to make sure that he left. And then one of them hit the alarm. Kelly hit the alarm and then was calling their supervisor after hitting the alarm while Lisa called 911. Because they were shook up. I mean, 19 and 21. And this is like 9 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. And guys, it was a motor bank branch. So him coming in behind them, that was the only way to get in to that bank building was to come in through that door. So they, um, after the cops got there, the cops let them call their boyfriends. Kelly was able to reach her boyfriend. Lisa, unfortunately, could not reach her fiance, Jack, who was a second year police officer with the San Antonio police and had worked the night shift the night before. So he turns his phone off and he goes home and goes to bed. I mean, makes, I get it. She tried to page him, but he didn't answer his pager, but he did call back sometime later to the branch and heard what happened. And being a police officer, he didn't immediately go to the crime scene because he was like, they don't need another cop who's off duty getting in the way. So, but he did eventually show up. Kelly's boyfriend who had dropped her off immediately turned around and went right back to the bank. He was like, I don't care. I'm going to go be with my girl. Now, when Jack got there, he did identify himself to the agents and officers outside that he was an off duty San Antonio police officer. He also had been in the Marines. So he was like a really good guy been in the marines Mm -hmm. police officer now this is what was interesting to me the bank executives and bank managers they were happy to see jack because he was such a good guy who's highly decorated marine and a respected san antonio officer while they're on the scene one of the executives said hey when you're off shift would you come to security for us because all of our employees are going to be scared shitless after this. And he said, yep, I can start next week, which I was like, you know, that's cool because here's something that's interesting. This bank did not have security cameras. Nowhere. Because it was a motor bank. They didn't have people coming in and out except for the employees. So they didn't think they needed them. And I'm like, so that, I mean, like, I get that. But at the same time, you really need to be looking out for the safety of your employees. You have a ton of money in one central location. If you want to even look like you care about your employees. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, because they could have driven up in a car and pointed again at me and I would have shoved all the money in the drawer and given it to them because money is not worth it. My life is a little bit more important. See, I agree. Now, they got away, he got away with almost $250,000. Here's the other crazy thing. The bank didn't use dye packs. So there was no dye packs oh. for the teller oh. to throw in with the money, as she put it, inside the trash bags. So, so they, they actually like, didn't have any. They didn't right. choose not to because they were so scared. They, they didn't have just, any on site. That's insane. I mean, $250,000. Now, as everybody knows, when you have a bank robbed, FBI gets involved immediately, right? So federal investigators showed up as long as officers. They were stumped as to how the bank robber knew exactly when the tellers would arrive. Okay, guys, 
first thing. Um, if the bank opens from nine to one, couldn't you just park outside and know they're going to arrive between 830? <laughs> or am I just... Okay. It would take, but they also it would take th like watching the store like two times to figure right. that out. They also said that they found it interesting that the bank robber knew the layout of the bank by knowing that there was two doors. I don't know if I buy that because you know that there's going to be a second door. There's not just one door. It's, it's not Pan's Labyrinth. Like it's right. not that hard to figure out. <laughs> yeah. Now they said that he also knew which safe held dollar bills and not coins. But in one article I read, it said that one of the tellers said which safe had the um, cash in it instead of coins. So I don't know if that says anything either, either, but hey. But Kelly and Lisa were both former high school cheerleaders. They were both cute, bubbly, adorable, and they were loved by the customers and the management of the bank. In fact, one article talked about some of the old men would come on the days that the young girls worked because they wanted to see the pretty ladies when they made their deposits. <laughs> that's that's how my grandfather chose his news shows. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, part of me was like, oh, that's cute. And then the other part of me was like, okay, that's just rude. But at first, I was like, and oh, how all sweet. Of me was like, all of me was like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, a little creepy. But Lisa and Kelly were both hysterical when talking to the police after the robbery. And I, I totally could see that. I would have, they would have had to give me a sedative. Somebody holds a gun to my head. They're going to need to give me a sedative. Now, something that police thought was weird was that, when they asked each of the girls, you know, to try to give a description, height, weight, and stuff like that. Well, Jack was standing next to Lisa, and she looked at his head, and she goes, oh, about that high. She goes, and probably about the same size. And she was hysterical, but then she kind of giggled, and she said, oh, my God, Jack, he's the same size, just like you. And the police thought that was odd, but I, guys... I often describe people by people I know. I'll be like, oh, he's about the same height and size as Double H. Or, hey, she reminds me of Heather Locklear, about the same size, blonde hair. I didn't find that weird. So I don't know if anybody else does, because I think it's pretty common. But I'm sure as a police officer, he was going, uh, thank you, I guess. <laughs> so now immediately after the robbery the officers and fbi agents searched the surrounding area looking in trash cans behind bushes they wanted to see if he had thrown that mask out or if they had tossed the money to come back later and get it but mm. they found nothing at all now police did, you know, initially they were like, you know, we think this might have been an inside job. Only somebody who worked here or knew somebody inside could have done this. So they became a little suspicious of the tellers, but they talked to them because, I mean, they were hysterical. They were both crying. They were both upset. Um, now, Lisa Silvis, who was 19 at the time, she had met police officer Jack Neely in September of 90 when he responded to a domestic disturbance call between her and her boyfriend at the time. And it is said that Jack became smitten with her during this call. And over the next several weeks, he, he wooed her, took her gifts, left her messages, helped her get away from the boyfriend from the domestic violence call. And I mean, she was 19. She had stars on her eyes. She was only making $250 a week. And that just wouldn't pay for a lifestyle. Now, Jack was 28 and she was 19. So a little bit of an age different. But Lisa liked to go shopping and pamper herself. And she dreamed 
of something better. And she was impressed by the older Jack. He was good looking. He was a decorated Marine, ex-Marine. And he was an up and coming, you know, police officer. Now, by December, that same year, they moved in together. So it was love at first sight, I guess. I thought that there was like some rule for police officers that you can't use crime scenes as a pickup site, but apparently yeah. not, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, uh, why not question people and also do speed dating? You know, what, what did he look I like? Guess. What time did he come in? What's your sign? What, what's your favorite food? Yeah. It's, it all is one and the same. Yeah. Now, Jack had gotten divorced and had a child. Okay. So he is a friend that police talked to and that a reporter talked to did say, you know, Jack had been very sad down in the dump. So when he met Lisa, she was young, beautiful. I mean, she made him feel invigorated again, you know, made him feel like, oh, somebody young and hot wants me kind of thing. Um, She had enough energy. I guess. I guess. Now, while talking to Lisa and Jack, They found that he would call the bank several times a day while she worked. And he would drive by the bank to make sure she was at work. And while he was on patrol, guys, this just gave me the ick. He would pull over her ex-boyfriend for any traffic violation he could find. And during the traffic stop would tell him to stay away from Lisa. So... I, I say he was a I'm little. I'm starting to see why he's weird. divorced. Yeah, right. Uh, now, he, you know, loved Lisa, and Lisa liked nice things. Problem was, he had gotten divorced. He had to pay his ex-wife alimony and child support, which did not leave him a lot of extra cash to spoil Lisa. Guys, this made the investigators go, "Ping, ping, ping!" Let's look into Jack. And Lisa a little deeper. Now, Lisa and Jack had gotten engaged about four months before the robbery. But interesting enough, instead of the wedding they were planning, they decided to get married at the courthouse nine days before the robbery. And Jack told the investigator that they decided to go ahead and get married instead of waiting so that Lisa could have his benefits. Right. But investigators dude what are you doing oh i thought he peed on me um (laughs) (laughs) investigators thought that maybe it was because he wanted spousal immunity you know but they're just they're just looking for things right because they've got no evidence that they had anything to do with this Guys, hold on. I am going to message Double H and hope he is home and ask him and come get Jasper to go. I can't say the word because I don't want him to go on me. And, you know, it's been a while. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Oh, crap. We're suspicious. Hey. Yeah. But I mean, so they were suspicious. I mean, I. Could see that too. Kelly and her boyfriend had been together. They, you know, didn't have any finance problems, lived within their means. So they weren't as suspicious of them. Now, several weeks after the bank robbery, Jack and Lisa, remember they had just gotten married nine days before. They decided to go ahead, get away and take a honeymoon. They told friends they were going to go to Florida. Guys, it was later discovered they actually went to the Grand Cayman Islands. Of course they did. And I think we all know why people go there, because they have banking laws and they do not give out the names of who owns bank accounts, right? But they had no proof they ever went to a bank. They have no proof that they did that. So Mm. I don't know why they lied to people. But who knows? 
but the police could not prove that the couple actually went there to hide money and they didn't have any evidence that they were involved whatsoever. Okay. So they had to keep looking at suspects and try to figure out who did this because they had no clue, no hints. Well, they went to go and talk to Jack's mom and stepdad and nothing came to light during the visit. They were like, okay, this, I mean, Jack was at home asleep. He, they confirmed he had worked the night before. There was nothing. However, just days after the investigators had visited the parents, the stepdad was out walking around on their farm and he saw an area that had been dug up and something buried. So being that person who's like, what the heck's going on? He got a shovel and started digging. Was he found? Was it, what, was it trash bag of money sized? It was not. Oh no! It was a blue canvas bag full of money. So they had put it in a canvas oh. bag. So knowing okay. that the police had just been there, and that Jack was either engaged or married to one of the tellers, he called the re police to report it. Mm -hmm. Well. Guess what, folks? The Texas Commerce Bank did not use dyed packs, but they did use what is called bait money. <laughs> I found this so interesting. Bait money is bills with serial numbers that have been recorded and put into a yeah. system and used to track stolen money. Now, the branch had 10 of these bait monies in each of the teller's drawers and 20 in the vault. Well, when police checked the serial numbers, guess what? They were inside the blue bag of money that Bill had found on his property. Now, the other interesting thing, the bait bills were separated from all the other money and were rolled up with a rubber band and a note that said Mexico money in Lisa's handwriting. <laughs> and the police speculated they were labeled for Mexico because using them in Mexico, they don't check serial numbers of American $100 bills like we do in America. So, <laughs> also, at the bottom of that blue canvas bag was a souvenir keychain that Lisa had picked up just a little bit before at her high school reunion. They did a re one year reunion. And she kept one year. the keychain. One year. One year reunion. They one. wanted to get back together. So in October of 1991, Jack and Lisa were arrested. Okay. Now, all but $95,000 were recovered. So... They didn't go to the Cayman Islands to put that money because why would you only do 95000 <laughs> Right? Right. So they pled not guilty, but they were both held without bond. They were both convicted. Lisa was sentenced to 13 years and Jack was sentenced to 15 years. I didn't mm -hmm. think that was very long. Mm -mm. No. I didn't. Now, I was unable to find where Lisa is today. And I will tell y'all, I went down some rabbit holes. I could not find her. But I was able to find Jack. And where Jack is. Right, and Jack. what Jack's been doing. Jack What's did not learn there? his lesson. Uh <laughs> Yep. <laughs> In 2012, Jack was arrested for being a felon in possession of a gun and impersonating a government agent. You know, leave it up to a name like like Jack or Joe or Ethan. They never learn their lesson. These guys never learned their lesson. Yeah. So, I mean, he was 28 
And when he went to prison, he served all of his time, got out, did this stupid thing. All of the articles say he was acting as a big shot. So he was taking people around. He was arrested outside of a big old country club, you know, dance place, and was basically acting like he was some important government guy and was carrying a gun. Okay. He was sentenced to 41 months in federal prison and then had to be on three years federal supervision after his release. Now, he is not deceased, but he's either staying out of trouble or he hasn't gotten caught again because I could not find any updates. He is, excuse me, not in prison anymore. So he's been released, but there is nothing about him since. So I'm guessing he hasn't been caught. Nah, he just moved. And he and Lisa are not together. Not that together. Checks out. That checks out. So, um, she did give an interview later saying that Jack did it. She didn't know it was him at the time because he had a mask on. But uh-huh. it was her handwriting. They did an analysis. It was her handwriting that wrote Mexico money. So, <laughs> whether she knew at the time, the other thing. He put police-issued zip ties on Kelly, put the gun to her head, never put it to Lisa's head. Lisa was never restrained. And Lisa's the one who walked him around to everything. So I don't know what Kool-Aid she's drinking, but nobody bought it. So that is my case about the Almost greatest bank robbery. Almost. Almost. I mean, there are so many. It's like, why would you bury money on your parents' property? I mean. I don't know. It must be like a subconscious, like that's the safest place I know. So that's where I'm going to go home to. Yeah. No. I did read articles them blaming it on the fact that Lisa and Jack both grew up without dads because um, Jack was a junior. His dad was um, a doctor and had flown in his private Cessna somewhere, drank a lot of drinks, and then tried to fly home and crashed and died. So Jack no. grew up without his dad, but he had a stepdad and mom, and Lisa apparently didn't have a good life, but guys, she was 19. You know, and I'm sorry, if you're 19 and a good looking 20 year old cop, I can see how you would make the dumb decision to do what he asked. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got a lot of friends that didn't grow up with a father, but they didn't end up robbing a bank. I think he just wanted money for to get out of whatever and get out of there and not have to deal with any of the responsibilities that he had. And she just happened money to present. So we could I, spend yeah. It. But yeah, so, so that's fun. I'm hoping that she has turned her life around and that she either got married, changed her name. The thing that was interesting and I tried to go down the rabbit hole, but there is a Kelly McGinnis who was a prosecutor in the same county where these bank robberies happened, but now it's not her um, because this woman's previous maiden name was Flanagan. But at first I saw it and I was like, oh my God, she went to law school and decided to become, but it wasn't her. I was so excited. She went went from Flanagan to McGinnis. Yeah, so uh, wasn't her, but I can't find Kelly McGinnis either. (laughs) <laughs> okay but did it have anything to do about your dad being around nope i think it was just fun i think it was just fun i mean Shunky did a good job he did a good job yeah but 
I'm sorry. I have to give a little grace to the 19 year old. Um, I'm glad yeah. she still was held accountable. She doesn't appear to have gotten in trouble again. So maybe she turned her life around, but I'm sorry, 19. We're all young and stupid. Right. Right. Or at least I was young. And oh, stupid. man. <laughs> he said, well, one of the cars was his. <laughs> Oh, oh, my goodness. Well, you know, I love the fact I love the fact that both of our cases didn't involve people dying. I know, uh, because that, that was, is so rare. For us. Yes, for us. <laughs> Nothing dark. Uh, now, no, but and, and both of ours. What? Mm -hmm. Before you start your case. I'm going to go give this guy to double H because I do not want to okay. um, be tinkled on. I'll be right back. That's Can a good idea. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> He's so cute. I want a goat now. I want a goat. And then I want the goat to show up my dogs and be like, why can't you do this? It's been this long. Why can't you get this right? You know? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I do. I have a Casper, but Cas Casper Casper is a beagle mix, and he's not smart at all. Shame on you. Maybe it's the <laughs> owner. I'm just being honest. Maybe it's the owner. It probably fault. is. I mean... They usually take the characteristics of their owner. How old is he? So it makes sense that he's quirky, too. And some change. Oh, he's he's still got time to get smart. Well, yeah, I can tell you Double H like, isn't very smart. Uh-oh. Because I stepped out and I said, hey. In your lap? No, I stepped out and I said, hey, I texted you to come get Jasper. He goes, oh, I don't know where my phone is. Well, I mean, if I could lose my phone, I would too. He never responds to text. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So not only did both of ours not include death, but they're both in the 90s. So what a decade for robberies, huh? What is it? I'm an 80s baby driving a 90s Mercedes? Or is it I'm a 90s baby driving an 80s Mercedes? There's a I think song. it's that way. That makes more sense. Okay. <laughs> I, I think. It'd be weird if you were an 80s baby driving a 90s car. Well, no. Not if it's like the... Th I don't know. Is it, If it's because country... Because you're a know. 90s baby, right? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm a late 80s. 87. Late. I am going to... If anybody knows what song that is... I only know it because I know my my son was born in the nineties and he his first car was a Mercedes that he bought on his own. I did not purchase it for him, but it was like an old eighties Mercedes. But I did not buy my it. My first him. car was a nineteen ninety eight Toyota Camry. Mm. <laughs> I had a um Toyota Celica. Mm. With little louvers I don't know. on the window. No, you know, no. Shunka, you may be right. I tried to highlight and show. See, my computer's not working. I don't think he wanted to come and get the damn goat either. Oh, I just heard Casper scream. Not Casper, Jasper. Scream. Is he a screaming goat? Ah! He is. When he can't find his mama, <laughs> he not happy. We got a 92 Chevy Lumina. We've got a 72 Cutlass. Ooh, was it a cut? What were they called? Like Cutlass Supremes or something? They were like long boots. It was a Cutlass Supreme. Yeah. All right. So I wrote this first sentence and I didn't think about what it was, what it implied, but I'm going to say it anyways because I've already committed to it. Uh, we all like easy things. <laughs> Some of them are expensive. Some of them are 35 cents. So um, 
we've kind of been conditioned to enjoy the easy and uh you know i, I don't really know why i'm starting the case like this because a robbery is a <laughs> hell of a thing to set up carry out and get away with uh and while the payday is immense, the question is, is it worth it? Once you have all that money, what do you do with it? Um, Cube Brewster's millions, right? It's like, I have to get rid of it. Oh, I've got to use it. But it can't be millions. like, you can't like, it can't attract attention. Right. Um, so we're going back to 1997. I think that's 27 years. I don't know. I don't math. Uh, we know this. I don't math. I don't gas math. I don't timeline math. I don't, I don't math. I think it's 27. I did it in my head. If it's wrong, eh, oh well. Uh, I don't like the fact that it was 27 years ago. I can say that much right now. <laughs> but it was. Um, let's let's add context to the case. Because sometimes like when I get like not shorter cases, but more like to the point cases, I like to add a little bit of something in there just to give it a little more. Um, let's talk about what was going on in 97 in the US. So the president's Bill Clinton. I'm nice guy. That's my best, Bill Clinton. Um, he actually he was a nice guy both times that I hung out. Uh, so the in terms of costs, the average home was one hundred forty six thousand uh, dollars. Median household income was between twenty seven and thirty seven thousand. Uh, gallon of regular gas was a buck sixty six, um, and the cost of a new car was sixteen nine, uh, which is just a little wild uh not much has changed about the median house income really uh just everything else <laughs> has gone way I say gas is insane um, right now yeah uh although if you do the if you do the breakdown of the 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 cost versus income and cost versus income now it's actually worse then than it is now that doesn't make me feel any better that doesn't mean any less money <laughs> out of my pocket i'll just say it okay um so events uh, in February, February 5th, Santa Monica jury finds former foot. You know what? We forgot to mention this, but this happened in 1997 of uh, Santa Monica jury finds former football legend OJ Simpson liable for the deaths of Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman. That's right. Yes. And he um, recently yes. went to hell. He sure did. Uh, Daddy's At least he knows where his wife's killer is. Because he's screaming. Uh, Oh yeah! Can you hear him? <laughs> Daddy is bringing him back. Money. Yeah, he's money. like money. Like, <laughs> yes. Speaking of expensive cars, you are correct. They are trying to sell OJ Simpson's yeah. runaway car. Yeah, for like one point five million. I mean, yeah. Really? Nope. Is that money going to go um, to the Goldman family or the Brown family? Like, who has the car? Probably the, the police. Um, uh, February twenty eighth, ninety seven, North Hollywood shootout with two heavily armed bank robbers. Um, March 9th, notorious BIGs killed in a drive by shooting. March twenty sixth is when the Heaven's Gate cultists commit mass suicide. June second is uh timothy mcveigh's convicted on 15 counts of murder and then just a a week or two later he's sentenced to death uh june 28th mike tyson bites evander holyfield's ear and takes a piece off and now he is promoting his weed gummies that are shaped like an ear um he's boy, what? the world's a weird place now yeah he's he's made weed gummies and they're shaped like ears um <laughs> that's just weird <laughs> Uh huh. Um, August thirteenth, South Park airs its first episode. December nineteenth, Titanic premieres in nineteen ninety seven. Um. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, uh, so, so, you know, that's just some of the ninety seven stuff that I could tell you about. There was a lot going on. Uh, I never really understood the concept of quote back to the good old days. I think what oh. people really mean is they want to go back to when they didn't know what was going on around them. Um, no, I'm going to were... tell you, 97 was a really good year for me. I got divorced from the first POS in 96. So 97 was fabulous. I was a single mom of two boys, and I did not have to put up with the controlling 
POS anymore. So 97 was a really good year. And I started well, dating listen, a hot guy who was really good in bed. Hey, yo, was it that one, dude? <laughs> no. Never mind. Um, <laughs> so, but like, overall, you know, what people really mean is, overall, I think they want to go back to when they didn't know what was going on around them when things were, quote, simple. Uh, but they weren't simple because they were simple. They were simple because we were young enough to be able to ignore it and not be informed, and it was okay. Um, things were just as crappy back then as they are now. Um, so We just didn't know it. Yeah, no. Uh, September 12th, 1997. Six people are involved. And it was at a Dunbar Armored Facility on Mateo Street in downtown L.A., California. That's right. I said Dunbar Armored Facility. Not a car. Not a bank. The Dunbar <laughs> Facility itself. You can bring him in. Um, yeah. Double H. Come on in. Oh, I thought I muted it, Here so you he, didn't hear that. Here he come. Oh, I think I heard him. Did I hear him? Yeah, you heard him. Come on in. <gasps> Hi. Come here. Come on. <laughs> Shanka said, bring the goat. <laughs> Come here, baby. Mama didn't weave you. Okay, sorry, guys. Cute. Um, okay, so there uh, there were a few people, only a few names get th thrown around during the case, but I'll name them. Alan Pace the third of Compton with childhood friends, uh, Eric Damon Boyd of Buena Park, uh, Eugene Lamar Hill Jr. of Bellflower, Freddie Lynn McCrary Jr. of Arletta, uh, Terry Wayne Brown Sr. of L.A., and Thomas Lee Johnson of Las Vegas. Um, I am going to leave out how much they took but what a set of facts um it took literal years to crack this case they left no evidence they were in and out in 30 minutes uh, and my question you know as i was reading the beginning of this is how the hell could that possibly happen how would they even know how this place was laid out let's carry somebody on worked there oh. Right. Police suspect, suspected it was an inside job. All current and former suspects were considered. All current and former employees were considered suspects. Um, while being questioned, a name came up over and over and over again. Alan Pace. Pace was a former security employee of Dunbar and the depot where the robbery took place. And I mean recently former employee. And I'll explain that in a second. Um, he worked at the facility for a grand total of a year and a half. Not only that, but he was the safety director for the company. When he was described, they said he was a normal guy. He had no criminal record. From what I found, he, he grew up middle class in Compton. Something that um, Alan used to do uh, at his job was prank people. A lot of folks really enjoyed this, even if they were the ones being pranked. He seemed like a down-to-earth kind of guy that I probably would hang out with, honestly. But he didn't have any like qualities that would lead people to believe he would be capable of something like this. But that's... Kind of the perfect setup. Um, yeah. Pace knew that if he was going to do this, he was going to need a little help. Uh, where else can you get a little bit of help but from your friends? If it's good enough for the Beatles, it's good enough for Alan Pace the Third. What? <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> to turn <laughs> Jasper, you, Jasper, you can't. You, you, your head's too big, man. It's too big. Sorry, guys. He looked at you like, really? You going to do that? Um, so, uh, so he decided to go to friends. He could trust these people. Uh, none of them had police records. Most of them spent nights doing bouncer jobs in nightclubs around LA. So there was a reason for them to be around. Um, before the robbery, excuse me, before the robbery, they sat down, had a serious meeting. They promised something to each other, a pact. Uh, they said that if anyone's arrested, they would take the fall for everything and not implicate the others. And Pace was the leader of all this. Of course, it's all well and good to talk about it, you know, agree on it, shake on it, bleed for it. But what happens when the light's in your face and what happens when your back is against the wall, right? Um, we'll find out. You so see. this robbery was set, right? Uh, this robbery was set to be a one-time event. This would have them set for a while. Um, 
of course, you know, without the knowledge of how high the cost of living was going to be and income was going to stay, how it was at the time, it, just, it was wrong all around. Um, but it didn't matter. This was the goal. Allen was able to provide them with a diagram of the facility. While he was working there, he did his homework, did not waste the time. He took pictures from the outside and the inside, not only of the locations, but of the video cameras in the hallways. He wanted his team to be able to visualize everything. He took photos of security guards. Uh, so, he, you know, he did the research. Uh, and now it was time to write the plan. He put down the steps they have to take, how many, how to avoid the cameras, how to take down the armed guards, gain control of the security command post, enter the vault, load the cache, and leave. Not only that, but he planned to take all, do all of this in less than 30 minutes. Now, they knew all of the entrances and exits by driving by a few times. Imagine that. They knew just by driving around a few times. The cops were confused in Texas as to how they knew there were two. Exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but when they drove, they chose to drive by weeks ahead of the robbery. So they didn't do it anywhere near um, when they were actually going to do it, which is really smart. Um, so all this time, Pace is still working at the facility. No one suspected a damn thing. Um, but as fate might have it, on the day of September 12th, he got a call that he was not expecting. He was being fired because of the pranks he was pulling. Uh, when they finished up the call, the last thing that they said to him and it was basically they asked him to turn in his keys the next day. Now, you can bet they regretted not asking him to bring them in immediately. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. Why? Because <laughs> Pace knew what he had to do now. He called everybody up and said, we're doing this tonight. And the timeline had moved up. Pace gave everyone their instructions and they gathered together. They didn't gather at any one house. They met up at a house party in Long Beach. With this, they established their alibis. They hung around for a few hours, left quietly, changed into outfits, masks, because, you know, what's a robbery but... <laughs> Ugh, I'll make it. What's a robbery but kabuki theater that actually makes somebody money? That's, that's pretty much what it is. Yes, banana in the banana in the tailpipe. Oh, that's from Beverly Hills um, Cop with Eddie Murphy. Yes, it also sounds like a really bad Friday night. Uh, <laughs> Depends on if you like a banana in your tailpipe. Fair, fair. Um, okay, <laughs> so they drove to the facility. They entered through the side door right after midnight. Eugene Hill was asked to rent a U-Haul truck. This is what they would use as their transportation. So they entered through the building. They found uh, and found that not being seen was 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 their first hurdle. That's that's the thing. You don't want to get caught before you need to make a move. But it's almost like Pace like took like a metal bandsaw and just cut the hurdle down to where they could just step over it. Because while he was wor working there, he conned a fellow employee. Uh, it was a couple of things. He conned a fellow employee who owned a truck that had a television monitor. The truck was always in the same spot. So they used that. They hugged the wall when they came in. And um, and he did a couple other things, too, before he left. Now, Pace, again, was supposed to return his keys the next day. He used that key to get inside. On top of that, they had codes. They never addressed each other by name, only by numbers. So they each had a number. And that's that's what they went with, which is really, really smart. Um, I say that's pretty smart. Yeah. So the security cameras in that facility pan, right? Pan left and right. And so Pace actually timed out the intervals of the panning. And they walked by undetected, taking turns as they crossed over in the hallway when the cameras were not panned towards them. Um, the one thing they didn't have was a key to the vault. But his co-workers did. Uh, not only that, but they planned their robbery around the time in which they took their lunch breaks. They usually left the vault open during this time because of the deposits that were coming in. Uh, when the employee's lunch break began, they tied the, they, they were in there waiting for them. They tied them up with duct tape and they took their key to the vault prep room. Um, so the prep room had a camera that, that they couldn't avoid, which, I mean, that sucks. Um, they'd done such a good job so far. Uh, there was just no way to avoid this one. Um, I'm just, just going to make sure that I have something correct. 
Uh, You're always uh-huh. correct. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, they so they they launched themselves upon them. They tied them up with duct tape. They took the key to the vault prep room. Now the prep room had a camera they couldn't avoid, like I said, which is why they took the two armed guards who were inside. It's easy to rush someone when nobody could possibly expect a robbery at the Dunbar facility. Who expects this? Not me. Not me. <laughs> what is he doing? What is he chewing on? It's hay. It's alfalfa. Hay. Oh. <laughs> uh, I thought he was just shaking his head at me, like in an affirmative. No, it's alfalfa um, hay. No. Okay. Well, that's all I need for Carrie to be like. Yep. I'll just give her some. <laughs> Hey. I'll send you some. Thank you. Um, so uh, those two guards were tied down. They were told to look directly at the floor. If they didn't, quote, their heads would be blown off. I don't think that's what they said. I don't think they were going to do that, to be honest with you. I, I don't notice a pattern of violence right? in any of it. Right. Well, yeah, but also like they went through all this trouble to not be detected. You know what I mean? And yeah. and and to just all of a sudden flip is is True. and they didn't have any records beforehand. They didn't have any violence on, you know, background. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they just had like one weapon there and that was it, you know, in order to, to just like threaten. Um, but there really wasn't any mention of guns mostly through this. Um, so not only were these folks tied down looking at the floor, but again, a great idea. The team made sure that at least one of them was watching these guards at all times. These these last two. Um, the U-Haul truck was brought inside the dock by one of the robbers once they'd gained access to the vault prep room. Um, again, the vault is always open on Friday nights because that's when employees moved cash inside the vault that was needed for the weekend. Pace also knew that the money was divided by delivery routes and he knew which had the largest denomination of bills. Um, one thing that I think contributed to their success is that is Pace's knowledge of the routes and that they cherry picked the cash that they wanted to take. In addition, he all, they also didn't take any brand new sequentially numbered bills that could be traced back to the robbery. Smart move. Um, I mean, I'd say they did their planning. I mean, they, yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to give them, you know, don't want to say they did great, but I'm I, just saying they. Honestly, I am. They I put some thought into this, it. This was well done. Um, at any moment during this entire time, anybody could have arrived. I mean, that danger is real, and that would have messed everything up. And if if the you know if they did have a weapon or two or five involved, those probably would have been used at that point. Um, maybe you know if they are in a corner, people do crazy things when they're backed in a corner. Um, mm -hmm. But despite that that fear or concern they had to do one more thing just one they found the video recorders and they took the tapes with them smart move just in case because there um, wasn't a cloud back then now, was there no so now they 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 were there were two locations that these vcrs were from for those of you playing the home game of i was born in the thousands vcrs play tapes they're like big things that have two reels and then there's film that goes across from one to the other and then it goes on the TV, and you can rewind it and fast forward it. There are no chapters, um, and you can accidentally record over it, and that makes everybody sad. So, <laughs> okay, I know this is totally off topic, but I just saw somebody who said that um, they showed their kid a picture of a floppy disk, and their kid <laughs> said, "Oh, that's cool, mom. You made a printout of the save." icon and i looked i'm like okay it does look like the save document icon. <laughs> i captain you're right we were still on geo cities and angel fire back then and there were no clouds in sight that's right not one um not one i you know what i i need one i have a couple of tapes i would like to play uh i just don't have one at the moment um so there were two locations that these VCRs were from. The first location was pretty easy because, I mean, and it made sense. It was in the supervisor's office, of course. 
Um, the second one was a little harder to find. It was kind of in the back, in a closet, in a room, off the side. Um, I caught you. Uh, hi, 80s. Hi, hi Amos. Um, uh, uh, okay, so the, the second one was hard to find, but they had information from Pace's ex-girlfriend, who also worked at Dunbar. So, and it just so happened that his ex-girlfriend, it was her job to change out the tape and the backup recording system. <laughs> ah, so one time so, that it pays off to get your honey where you get your money. Right. <laughs> yes, it's true. So true. Um, okay. So they, um, no shots were fired. They got off with the largest cash heist in American history up until recently. If you heard about the news recently, that's yeah. now the largest, but up until very, re I was like literally reading this research at the same time that that news came in. And I was like, what? JT, um, did you, did you mm -hmm. use this information to pull off the heist that just happened? So you no. pulled off the new heist, didn't you? Mm -hmm. yes they totally flew so, i can't even afford to fly out to do the heist so <laughs> it weren't i'm gonna me. expect you to um, buy drinks in denver i would do if that if you anyways. have all that buddy listen i don't buy drinks for free uh okay <laughs> i will bring, bring that 35 goat. cents um <laughs> Okay, no. My goat is off limits for any favors. Oh, I didn't mean like that. I just meant Oh, okay. Because like you know the... I don't know if you've heard, but in Texas, they call them... Go I'm... Oh, what is it? But it's something very not nice about doing bad things. To I'm in the goats. Diet Coke of the South. I'm not that far into the South. And yes, that okay, is good. a generality. And I apologize for everybody who's in here who's from the South. I'm kidding. Well, I will bring the goat if I can get him certified by July. If I can get him certified to be my part. animal by July, he will come with me. That would be awesome. Um, so they made off with $18.9 million. And 97? With an M. And 97. Today, That's that worth. is the equivalent of $35.9 million. Holy shebang. Did you hear that? That's that a shebang. lot. That's a lot of money. He said, eh, eh. <laughs> he said, give me a can. Oh, he just, he gave All me right. kisses. This makes everything better. We listen, I could now do the toolbox murders, uh, with the goat there. No, I couldn't. I wouldn't. You could. That case. Um, I won't. That's one case I will never toolbox cover. Toolbox murders. Um, was it toolbox? I think it's toolbox. Angie will tell me. Am I getting that right okay. or wrong? Toolbox. toolbox. Or is killers it the toy the box? box? Killers. Is it the toy box? Is it toy box? It might be toy I box. Bet the you ones where the they have like that, that place to put them Cindy, inside of. And, yeah, Cindy uh, was yeah, her yeah. name, and his, yeah, no, we're not covering that. Yeah, no, <laughs> I will never. I've always decided never <laughs> to do that. Um. Okay. Um, Amy, Amos still has a Rolodex of floppies. I love it. Uh, that makes me happy on the inside and on the outside, as you can tell. Um, so while they were trying to figure out what to do with the money, the investigation started. But all they could really find was a plastic tail light lens that didn't really belong to any company vehicles. Uh, the FBI was able to connect that to ones that were used on 14-foot Yule Hall trucks. But here's the thing. That U-Haul truck was rented by Pace's buddy, who they don't have any reason to connect them, and he never worked at the bank. So it just, it wasn't, what? So they didn't really get anything off of that anyway. So so what do they do? They're not going to spend, spend it lavishly. Uh, the money was being stored in trash bags, because that's what you do with money. Um, yes, uh, each of them... Initially got a hundred thousand dollars, and Pace put the rest in a storage facility. A uh, hundred thousand is just about one hundred and seventy thousand today. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where he got the um, 
uh yeah i'm not sure where he got the this job is the last thing they would ever need to do but my guess is that he kind of treated it like the lotto where option where you're like paid a little every month um so that they wouldn't have it all at the same time and that prevent them from making a mistake and you know um uh buying something massive or attracting attention uh for six months nothing happened uh, then Pace and the crew put a million dollars to pay for real estate property in the L.A. area. Pace made sure that nothing could be traced back to him. He spent a lot of money in cash. He didn't have a bank account. Um, at one point, he figured... Uh, actually, this is what's fascinating to me. At one point, he actually figured out they had stolen some sequential bills. And that was a total accident because they tried to avoid doing that. And because of that, he right. asked two of the team to go burn the money. Um... They, so he yeah. literally had money to burn. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, and here's the thing, though. So this isn't what really this isn't what got them. Um, but the two of them realized it took way too long to burn money. Um, it's 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 not paper. Money is not paper. It's fabric. That's why it doesn't fall apart in the wash. So there's a lot more to it. Um, what did you not know that? Yeah, no, I did not know that dollar bills. Dollar bills I thought it was paper and fibers. I thought it was both. Is it? Is it just it fabric? It's. I thought it was twenty five percent. It's twenty five percent linen, seventy five percent cotton, with red and blue fibers distributed randomly throughout. Wow. I I learned that when I went to the tr treasury, the mint, the mint, up in DC. Okay. Um, they won't let me, me in. Too, Kimber's me too. At the mint, I'm sure they do a background check. They won't let me in. <laughs> She'll just buy another goat, guys. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was. Hey, a when bad I win the lottery, um, I'm gonna have a bunch of goats. When I win the lottery, if you win the lottery, I want one. And then okay. I want you to move my family out to Texas and we'll just and we'll, you can we'll come. have a compound. I mean, yes. a neighborhood, not a certainly not a compound, a neighborhood. How about a farm? Texas compounds, not big fans of compounds. How about a farm? <laughs> we do farm. Just a farm. The farm? Yeah, we'll, we'll bring everybody to the farm. Yes, Terry can teach yeah. everybody uh, goat yoga. Um, yeah, I don't do yoga. For sure. Sorry. I don't. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yes. Shunk has got the pr e. yes. Oh, but we got to add Fruit wine prime. in there too, because I would have grapes. True crime and wine estates. Yes. You know what? Forget it. You and we just need to open our own vineyard. That's true crime, like branded. Yes. Come on, that's, that's a that's an amazing idea. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the first thing about it. Uh, I, I like to drink. But it. we're not um so we're not gonna well, serve Cabrito, right? Sure. <laughs> no, that's goats. Isn't that what baby goat? Isn't oh, that then, like goat meat? Then no. Of okay, course we're just not. making sure. No. No. In fact, uh, but Jasper Cover is gonna ears. be on our bottle. For sure. Yes. Jasper will be on the bottle. Um so, anyways, it took too long to burn the money. Uh, and so they did what anybody else would do. They decided to spend it in Vegas. <laughs> Why not? Um, As one does. Now, they did find out that new bills jam up slot machines because they're so crisp and you know difficult to get into the slot machine. So they put it... I don't know. That's what it said in what I read. So they put the cash in a washing machine to make it usable. <laughs> so there you go. Makes sense. Um, totally. Um, the investigation went cold. Um, Pace ended up buying an office space. He set up a new company called Extreme Entertainment. On the surface, it rented party equipment, jet skis, limos. Um, but it was actually a front to pay the crew more money, right, from that stolen money. So he hired them, and that's what he used to dole it out. Uh, what Pace didn't realize is that Hill, who happened to be the same guy who rented the U-Haul, Hill gave a middleman a hundred thousand dollars to buy the property, but failed to remove the cash straps. Oh. 
Ba-da, ba-da. It's the details, um, people. It's uh-huh. the details. And it wasn't even Pace that made the mistake. Um, so the middleman contacted the authorities after discovering the straps. Uh, they determined that uh, from the dates on the straps that that was the money taken. Uh, they started watching Hill, and the authorities subpoenaed his bank and phone records, tens of thousands of U-Haul records to link Hill with the U-Haul rental. Um, they arrested him, uh, and he... <laughs> Do you remember that meeting that they all had where they said, we're not going to flip on anybody, we're going to take the blame entirely if we're caught? You, yeah, right. You, like, basically, you might as well have cut their palms and, like, shook hands or spit on their hands and whatever. Like, yeah, no, he immediately elected to assist with the investigation. Um, <laughs> he um, admitted his involvement and he named the accomplices, doggone it. Um, the FBI. You just cannot get good help. <laughs> no, you just can't. Uh, the FBI offered him a deal. He took it. Pace remained true to his word, though. He refused to rat anybody out. The trial commenced in February of 01. The defendants who pled guilty were given seven and a half to 11 year sentences. Pace was found guilty and received 24 years, probably because he put it together. Um, however, to this day, Pace denies any involvement with the robbery. He thought he had been framed. <laughs> This was his reasoning. He'd been framed by one of the other defendants, quote, because I was messing with his wife. Now, how much money did they recover? That's my very next thing. They were only ever able. Right. They were only ever. (laughs) Amos. Um, they were only ever able to recover about five million of the eighteen point nine million by way of the homes, cars, and other valuables they bought. Um, there's over ten million still unaccounted for. The rest is thought to have been squandered by them at gambling tables in Las Vegas or burned because you know because of the sequentially numbered bills that they found. Um, but. Uh, the no, they got smart and hid some of that money somewhere for when they got out, they could spend it. So, oh, if yeah, they did sure. that, my question if you rob the bank and you get busted like they did, and that 10 million or however many millions are not recovered, can they get busted again for spending it, or are they off the hook for it? Oh, I don't know. That's because they did their time. Question. Yeah, I don't know. Um, now, there was one of the guys, Eric Damon Boyd. Uh, Eric's father was an immigration lawyer. Now, <laughs> this is the interesting part. Um, the, there were four of the accomplices, right? Four out of five who pleaded guilty, testified um, uh, over a three week trial, uh, as did Boyd's father, Steve Boyd who told judge jurors that his son had confessed to him. So he was part of it right Um, now, but that's, 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 that's not it. Uh, Steve Boyd, uh, the, the son's father laundered $177,000 in cash for his son through his business. So. Hey, so so did he he get his at least law license taken away? I believe that he did. Um, Good. Now, Pace and Boyd were sentenced on April 23rd, 2001, um, sentenced later with the other accomplices. But this is one of the most intricate, methodical, and brilliant cash robberies that has ever been committed up until this point. Um, So that is the Dunbar heist of 1997, and they didn't need Twitter to do it. And that's probably why they got away with it. Uh, so, that I mean, yeah, if it wasn't just those darn money bands. I, I have to be honest. I wouldn't have thought that the money bands were traceable. I think, I think it's 
Okay, don't it's do not that. So don't much hurt the yourself. Traceable, right. I'm going to hurt myself. I think it's not so much the traceable. It's the fact that it was very suspicious that he received a bunch of money wrapped in multiple bands. And when he reported it, the police took a look at the bands and said, hmm, that's the same day as this. That's this. Hmm. And then they started putting things together. Okay. Um, hi, Annie. Um, thanks for peeking out of your lurk bush. Um, that doesn't sound... That is what it is. I six eight. Uh, anyway. I have a lot to say about a lurk bush, but I'm going to just not. Yes, we want to stay on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> I like how we talk about murder, but lurk bush is really what's going to do it for us. That's what's going to put us over the edge. Um, you know what? Don't answer that either. Uh, <laughs> oh, geez. Yes, please click like. Also, um, real quick before I forget. Um, and, and not on purpose, obviously. I'm just, my memory shot. Uh, uh, I still have the fundraiser going for um, Jennifer and, um, oh my gosh, why? Why? Every time. Mason. Whew, there it is. Jennifer Mason, uh, uh, who really took a hard hit in the tornado storm in Louisiana and Slidell. Uh, the website's down below. It's been running. If, if you're able to, awesome. Um, if not, share the site. Um, amongst friends, um, but it would be really great if we could. We've we've hit about I think we've hit 250. I would like to hit 300, so that would be really really cool. You all have been super super generous. Um, you do not have to obviously. However, thank you in advance if you do. Um, do you okay. want to know? And then, do you want to know hmm? an interesting tidbit? I learned Go how to on. swim in Slidell, Louisiana. Did you I should say really? in the deep end. I would only swim in the shallow end because I was scared of deep water. And we had gone to Slidell to visit some family. And my dad was probably drunk. But he said, I'm tired of you being a puss. You won't get in the deep end and swim. So he just threw my ass in the deep end and said, drown or swim. And I swam. There you go. I bet you did. So I, mean, I kind of, I mean, I went on to swim and played water polo. So it's not the best parenting advice I can give, but I did it. I don't know. Um, I kind of like Slidell, Louisiana, and I used to catch the little light bugs there in mayonnaise jars. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't know you played water polo. That's awesome. And also exhausting. In high school, I did. Maybe one day I'll share photos um, as long as nobody calls me Twiggy or Stick. But I was very, I weighed about 90 pounds, soaking wet and 5'11 and a half. So Twiggy's not a bad nickname. She's a very successful model. So, um, yeah, but you could see her ribs. But yeah, I swam and played water polo. Oh, well, I don't know that much about her. <laughs> um, yes. Kevin, it is. I like watching it when it's on. Like, um, mm -hmm. it's it's hard. The Olympics or whatever. It's... Yeah. It, the, 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 yeah. Um, I do want to say this. Um, I spoke to to Rudy, and uh, he wants to do a show tomorrow. So, uh, we're gonna do Hey Ho Show tomorrow night. Um, <gasps> we are not gonna do the quiz tomorrow night. Uh, but. Uh, we we're gonna just kind of hang out and have some fun tomorrow, uh, so that's gonna be tomorrow at nine. And then also, I made an adjustment to the um, the command for Hey Ho Show, or not Hey Ho Show, but Night Court. Uh, I realized after scheduling us for like Monday, Wednesday, that on Wednesdays a chunk of things happen for me, whether it's soccer games or the new bowling league that I'm joining. Um, so because I'm 80 um but are you but, talking about real bowling or what bowling refers to for couples no real bowling okay I'm so not you are fun. 80 yes i am okay. uh for sure uh but this, this league at the end you get two bowling balls out of it so that's kind of cool um <laughs> I'll, I'll take it uh I, I, it's a great deal it I'm doesn't like you would need make, some new balls make, I, I get two new balls. I have two right now, but they're the old balls. I need new balls. So I'll have four balls. So enough balls for everybody. Um, 
So I have a question tomorrow night. Um, I think I'm going to drop in and see y'all because Double H will be yes. out at the ranch. So I will um, be at home drinking a lot of cocktails. Double H bowls. He even has his own bowling ball with his nickname Douche imprinted into his bowling ball. Not Deuce, Douche. 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 Okay. I he what won't tell me the story behind that, but because <laughs> he cleans up, I don't. That's weird. Um. Okay. What? <laughs> Maybe one day we'll get him to come on and he can tell us. But no, I would love to see you and Rudy tomorrow night. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, of course you're always welcome. Um, you're always always welcome. Uh, so. So yeah, so Friday, okay. hey ho show, no quiz. Um, but and then Monday, Tuesday. Okay, so so Monday is midday missing on in May, in May. Uh, and then also night court. And then Tuesday yes. will be night court. And then Wednesday will be midday missing. And then Thursday will be true crime and wine time. And then the opposite of that will be hey ho show on Fridays. Yeah. We've gone no. from zero to sixty real fast. <laughs> <laughs> we have. And since I figured out why I can't do anything on my computer, and it's because my mouse is dead and it needs to charge. But somebody asked what adult bowling is. So bowling here in Texas when I grew up, that meant your parents were doing shake a bow bow wow wow. So they would say, hey, we're going bowling tonight. And don't um... come in the bedroom. So bowling was code word for them having sexy time. Oh, is that what that's called? That's what that is. Um, so my Philippines nice, recruiting nice team always laughs when um, I would ask them, I'm like, so did anybody go bowling this weekend? And they didn't know what that meant. And I told them and they were like, oh, Miss Terry, you can't ask us that. <laughs> You know, I was always told that like when Thunder hit, it was the Angels bowling. And now I have a completely different thought as to what that means. Um, I was told that was my grandparents bowling. Oh, mm. well, why not? You know, you know, they I guess my parents thought it was spicy because my mom and dad did bowl on a bowling league. So I guess that was their way of slipping in bowling and we wouldn't think anything i guess <laughs> phrasing <laughs> phrasing <laughs> slipping in oh geez gonna go bowl with pineapples or or grapefruit or grapefruit close your ears jasper you're too young for this <laughs> but no we have gone from zero to 60 looking at our stuff um which yeah. I have to say that I'm kind of excited about it. Yeah, me too. Uh, despite this, despite one, two, three, it's all, it's still only, it's still for, for me, it's still only three days, three nights a week because of things flipping back and right. forth. And so it's, well, well, you still get a lot of content. It's still manageable because there's nothing right. I hate more than canceling. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I still feel guilty for canceling Agreed. in my earlier live stream life. Oh, so that's... don't like doing it. Um, I, I hear yeah. you. Um, and that's why I wound up pushing midday missing to May, hoping the vertigo would be gone. I'm getting an infusion on Monday, so shouldn't have to cancel because I'm the same way. I, I put so much pressure on myself when I have to cancel that I literally, I mean, I just sit there and beat myself up, which is not good, you know, to do. Yeah, yeah. It's the 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 one thing that helps is the community that we have being forgiving and, and caring. And so that helps me feel better about it. But if I don't have to, I don't want to, of course, life right. happens. So, um, but yeah. yeah like yeah. I even told the group, because I popped onto the midday yesterday because we forgot to take it down and told them that even if vertigo hit tonight, I was going to do it from my bed 
in my pajamas. And yes, I would put pajamas on since I don't sleep in pajamas, but I would put pajamas on to be on YouTube so they wouldn't try to refer us to OnlyFans because <laughs> we don't need to see any white beached whales on YouTube. Terry. No, but we do need that income. <laughs> We, I mean, we could use the income so that we can, I will say on our first midday missing, we have a bonkers case to cover. I actually, because okay. on midday missing, we're not doing investigation. We're just sharing stuff. I actually talked to the family of a missing person and guys, I cried for close to two hours afterwards because we're just going to say Harris County, who screwed up on the Chase Lackey case, have screwed up even worse on this other case. I just heard the bullet points, y'all, and she's not kidding. Yeah, so no, I'm, I'm excited to do a Midday Missing, and we'll probably even maybe bring some families on if they can do it during the day. Oh. No, we have weekend. to be hard on ourselves. We we got high standards for ourselves. But I I'll be honest. We're going to bring this new content. We're going to only reschedule if we have to. One thing I've told JT, we have to make sure we take care of ourselves because especially on the true crime stuff, it's heartbreaking and it can take its toll on you. And I will yeah. tell you the missing midday. That's why we're going to keep it. 30 to 45 minutes hour tops because it's heartbreaking. It's, and I take everything so personal. I mean, I have cried myself to sleep over Chase Lackey. I feel like I know him because of his family and friends. And this isn't even my kid. And I cry about him. So it's, it's hard. And that's why I'll be honest, guys, every time we finish a live stream, I go take a bubble bath. Because I yeah, have to do yeah. something to just try to erase my mind. And I just listen to some good old country music and lay my head back. Yeah, I think. And, you know, you have a perfect time, too, for it. Because it's really when a lot of course, courts go in re recess for lunch. And mm -hmm. so instead of, like, staring at an empty chair from somebody else or a live, like, right. you know, whatever... It, it's it, you can hop over to us and then hop whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a really good good spot for it. Um, and I think that that's when most people are going to be able to take a break from where they're at and 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 experience those stories. And maybe they know something. Um, you never know. You never know. You never know. And I mentioned this yesterday. Episode two of True Crime and Wine Time, when I started it and I did it by myself, I covered Kimberly Langwell, who is missing out of the Golden Triangle, Beaumont, Port Arthur, Port Natchez area. And I did research. I wasn't confident enough in my abilities to investigate, but I narrowed down who I thought it was. And I found him and I wanted to go to his house and question him. And Double mm -hmm. H was like, have you lost your effing mind? Now, I would just get my back up and go. They are actually taking it to the grand jury. And that guy looks like he's going to be indicted. So I would like to think just by sharing that case, I noticed after we did it, a couple of other podcasts covered it because it was a pretty much unknown case. Nobody knew anything. So I would just like yeah, to think yeah. that just by giving it a little bit of exposure as a newbie podcast, I mean, it's not a great episode. I've listened to it repeatedly and I'm like, yeah, that's so, I mean, but I was just starting out, you know, but, and that's what I hope with Midday Missing we can do is just get the word out because guess what? Nobody can go missing without somebody knowing or seeing something. I said this yesterday. It's not like a little invisible alien ship comes and sucks somebody up. It doesn't right. happen. It is impossible for somebody to just disappear. It doesn't happen. Sure does. Sure it does. does. 
you know, at some point I'll get I'll get uh, brave enough to where just for fun, for like a fun evening, I'll just stream our bowling night from the bowling alley. It'll be fun. Why not? That would be fun. Give you some more time. You can hang out with me, Rudy, and my buddy Billy, and you can see how bad I am, and it'll be fun. <laughs> That'll be fun. But you know what? I think we told everybody that we're all going to be together in July at the True Crime yes. and Paranormal Conference, and Mike, your yes. original co-host and lifelong co-host of Brew Crime, we're going to all be there together. And we're going to do some live streaming if we can get Mike on camera. Mike is not like JT and I who love the camera. Mike's like, yeah, no. But we're going to try after a few drinks, a couple of gummies. That that glorious, glorious beard needs to be on camera. It does. And he even said I could put pink bows in it. So I am going to make some pink bows. Awesome. Perfect. Yes, we are definitely going to stream. I that's the thing, you know, again, this is like the whole promise thing. We promise to stream. We're going to stream. Um, we will. We, we've got the tech. We've got the knowledge and know how. It's just a matter of just taking the stuff with us and get, get, get wow. her done. Get her and done. That's right. Us not making total idiots of ourselves after cocktails and live streaming. <laughs> I mean, what's um, the difference? I, all, <laughs> all I know is I made the decision, and I hadn't told you this yet, JT, but if any of our subscribers show up at that event and show me on their phone or whatever device, I will send them a free t-shirt for True Crime and Wine Time. And if there's multiples, I will pay for the shirts and send them. Because I There's really think it'd be multiple. cool to meet some of them. There's what? what I'm going to get kicked off of YouTube. I said, there's always multiple. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am known for multiples. I mean, not going to lie. I'll own it. <laughs> We're talking about strikes. Strikes and bowling. Wait, that still yes, doesn't make any strikes sense. strikes and bowlings. Bowling's but ruined yes, for so me forever. I would love if people can come and meet us and hang out with us. Because if anybody does, awesome. I'd also love Denver. to bring them in on the live stream. Bring the multiple. <laughs> That's exactly what the judge said. Yeah. You know, maybe um, for, depending on where everybody lives, just get a convoy together and drive to Denver. That's a fun drive too. I, I that I'm would be it... a fun drive. Yeah. yeah. So all right, it'll be well, exciting. Oh, for sure. One way or maybe another. we can go we bowling while we're in Denver. I won't say no, but I'm not gonna real bring my bowling. I, mean, I am, but I'm not not gonna bring my. Okay, you, you know what I, mean. I need to clarify: real bowling. <laughs> yes. I'm sharing a room with somebody, but it ain't for that. So <laughs> if it is, I do not need to know. But no, I'm excited. Yeah. I think taking a break and just doing thing every other week is good. Um, and I think you doing night court a couple of nights instead of trying to doing four or five makes more sense now when we get to where we can both quit our jobs and do this full time heck we can stream eight hours a day that would be the ultimate goal that's what we would love to do um we got a little ways to go on that one but that's okay we do okay. hey but we all gotta have goals uh, it's true it's true also i don't i don't go bowling at conferences that's how you get um i'm gonna bring this back full circle right now that's how you get chlamydia <laughs> <laughs> I thought you, you got listen, that from koala bears. You only want to take away from conferences like that um, stickers and uh, fun stuff. You you don't want to take chlamydia away from a conference, but that is how that happens. So, um, you know, don't don't do that. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't want to bring back anything contagious. 
from the conference. Uh, yeah, no. No, 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 no. So, but right. I think it's going to be exciting and it'll be exciting to see you tomorrow night. Yes. Yes. Excited. Everybody come on back. We'll be here. Um, hit the little reminder button. Um, and it, I already scheduled it, so it should be up now. Um, and and uh, we will see you then. All right. Uh, I will finish up with take care of yourself, your friends, your family, your community. Um, don't let anybody dull your sparkle and shine on you crazy diamonds. And I'm going to say as always, stay safe, watch out for crime, and enjoy your wine time. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Thanks.